So this brings us to the official start of the course. Now, did you kind of find that that introduction video was a little bit long-winded? Perhaps it maybe should have been a little bit longer. Perhaps I shared too much. What do you think? What were your thoughts? I actually created that introduction video as long as what it was, intentionally. Reason being is because many people embark upon a communication skills training, not to be educated, but to find some techniques that they can build into their life to become more manipulative or more coercive or, um, or to earn more votes. And that's not what this training course is going to deliver upon. All right, this training course has been designed to equip you to become a more transparent and a more authentic communicator. So let us just get this course off to a start by kind of leveling the playing field a little bit and perhaps coming into alignment in terms of our understanding of what communicating or communication is actually all about. So what is communicating? There are just so I can acknowledge this, a million and one different ways that communication could be defined. All right, so what I'm saying, what I'm not going to say here is that this definition is the only definition, but it's the one that I am choosing to embrace as true for the purposes of building all of the rest of the teachings within this course around. Make sense? Being able to communicate effectively is one of the most important life skills we can learn. Granted. Communication can be defined as transferring information to produce greater understanding. Mm -hmm. There we go. Communication can be defined as transferring information to produce greater understanding. Now, this one sentence within itself can be interpreted a million and one different ways. You might be nodding your head right now, just saying, yeah, that kind of makes sense. You might be shaking your head right now, just saying, no, that's not true. That's not right. Kane Ramsey, you're wrong. I can't believe I've just enrolled in this course and I've paid my good money and you're teaching me something that is wrong. Okay, so let us kind of backtrack just a little bit and let us see if we can step out of right or wrong and just simply understand that there's more than one way of seeing and interpreting everything. So let us even consider that communication is kind of about enabling one person to convey what they understand to another in an understandable way. Would that fit? The purpose of your communication is to convey what you understand to other people so that they understand what you understand. I want to convey what I understand to you in an understandable way so that you can understand what I understand. <laughs> so much understanding. This course is about you growing in understanding. It's about me growing in understanding. It's about the whole world growing in understanding. Which is kind of what the world needs today, isn't it, in order to become a bit more relationally effective? So look at this diagram here on the board, right? Um, let's just say that, that I'm in the green and that you're in the blue. I am a sender of communication right now. You are a receiver of my communication right now. What I have is my field of experience. That's all that I have and no more. I do not have your experience. I don't know what it means to be you. I don't know what it requires to be you. I don't understand your struggles, your history, your passions, your goals. All I understand and all that I can relate to right now is me and my field of experience. Which means all the communication that comes from me, the noise that I make, the messages that I imperfectly attempt to deliver, will determine whether you grow to understand what I've come to understand from the experience that I've had within my field. The field just simply being my life so far, professionally, relationally, socially, intimately. So here you are now as the receiver of my information. You're now receiving my information. My ability to communicate well, concisely, articulately, is going to determine, or at least heavily influence, how much or how little you grow to understand what I want to help you understand. Now, you are going to be, at this stage of the game, thinking about giving some feedback. You're going to be agreeing or disagreeing, or possibly you're, okay, you now you're trying to understand. If you stop trying to agree or disagree, or stop agreeing, disagreeing, and actually try to understand what I'm saying, and then because of the way in which I'm saying what I'm saying, you understand what I'm saying, and then come to a greater degree of realisation in your own life, you're going to have come to the appreciation that you've learned something. 
you think, oh, okay, I'm getting some value from this training and the feedback's gonna be positive. You're gonna then give me some feedback that states, yes, you've communicated something that has resonated with me, that has enabled me to learn something. Now, if you do not learn something throughout this training course, if I just kind of share with you a whole anecdotal range of nonsensical ideas that you can't relate to and you end up leaving this course no better off than what you were before you came onto it, the feedback's going to be poor because you're not going to have found value. But if I can use the words that come out of my mouth, my tone, my body language to maintain your attention and teach you something, then it doesn't really matter what the something is. The training course has enabled you and equipped you to become a more effective communicator and more relationally, socially competent. So here's the interesting principle that I really want to open up this training course with. And this is that the meaning of a communication is found in the response that we get. So there's what I mean to say when I say what I do. I'm always going to have an intention, right? I've come... I stand, I stand before you today for the purposes of sharing with you what I understand to help you understand more about yourself and about how to communicate well. If I do my job well, you're going to learn something. If I don't do my job well, you're not going to learn something. But here's the thing. What I say is irrelevant. What is relevant to you is how you interpret what I say. Because you have the opportunity to interpret what I say accurately or inaccurately. Wisdom comes in understanding the difference. The meaning of a communication is found in the response that we get. What I say to you throughout this entire training course will be absolutely irrelevant so long as you assign disruptive or unhelpful meaning onto what I say. But if you can look for the gold and the nuggets of wisdom in what I say, and if you perhaps were to assume that I actually have the best of intentions for you, not the worst, I'm not here to impose an agenda onto the world or into your life, then you might see that I'm actually here to deliver a training course that's geared to equip you to communicate more effectively, which means that this course is going to be okay, whatever. But either way, right, the meaning that you assign onto this communication will determine whether you likey or whether you no likey. It's not what I say that will determine that. Right, let us open up with a few potential goals that you might have, right? Um, when I read a book, when I take a training course, first and foremost, it's important to define goals. Some people will define whether a thing is good or not good. Sometimes some people will define a person as being good or not good based upon whether this person or this product or this service met their expectations or not. Expectations in life and having expectations will sometimes prevent us from simply appreciating things for what they are. All right, we kind of go into a movie theater to watch the latest movie, the latest James Bond, and you know we had some expectations as to what this movie was going to be, and then our expectations weren't met. So we perhaps come out and we say, I didn't like that movie, it was bad, because it didn't meet my expectations. Kind of like the movie producers should have taken our expectations into consideration as they were investing millions or billions of dollars into this movie. Expectations are just ideas not entitlements, first and foremost. Which means that when you're communicating with people in a group, with your spouse, with your children, you are not entitled to them listening to you. You are not entitled to them respecting you, honoring you. You're not entitled to them trusting you. You will either earn these things through demonstrating yourself as consistent over time, or you won't. One of these, one of these interesting facts of life. So let us consider what your communication skills goals are. Because if we can define what your goals are, then it doesn't really matter what your expectations are. Right? You now have a purpose for seeing this course to completion. Right? Do you see how I'm using words and my ability to, commu to communicate to relate to you? And hopefully you're able to relate to me now and what I'm saying. Is your goal to get people to do what you want them to? Is your... Is your <laughs> Is your goal to become more manipulative or more coercive? Is that what you want? Or would you like to find techniques that you can use to manipulate people into liking you or loving you or buying stuff from you? 
how about you would like to learn how to make greater progress in your career? Communication is one thing, upskilling something else. How about selling more products and services? Do you think that communication skills or do you want to increase your communicational ability to sell more stuff, which might involve a bit more manipulation? You know, manipulating people into thinking your products and services are the greatest? How about it's becoming more socially influential? Are you the kind of man or woman who's actually just, you've kind of gone past the, the career, make money, make an name for yourself kind of stage of life, and you're, you're now looking at how it is you can become more influential in your society or your hometown or your city or your nation or on the world stage. Perhaps you might want to do what I'm doing at some point in your life. Is that your goal? How about you want to become a more prominent leader, a more influential leader, a more inspirational leader? How about techniques? Maybe you're looking for some techniques just to become a better speaker. You know, so you can maybe get out there and do some, some really engaging and quirky keynote presentations. Maybe you want to go and do a TED talk. Maybe you want to go and deliver a monologue to the world and impress people with how quirky you are and say some really cool things in a really quirky way. And it's actually not about imparting wisdom and knowledge onto people. It's actually just about impressing people with how great a communicator you are. Maybe your communications are ego-driven. What's your goals? Would you like to become a more communicator so you can help people feel happy or happier or just warm and fuzzy inside? Do you want to improve your social professional relations? Do you want to become more persuasive, more authoritative? Would you like to earn people's trust and be listened to? The fact of the matter is this, that there is no communication skill that you can learn that is going to earn you the trust um, of other people just like that. Right? Trust is one of these uh, things in life that is developed over time through consistency. So it's not about developing techniques or, 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 or kind of skills you can apply right away. It's actually more about living our lives in a, in a consistent way, an authentic way. Right? Just think about this for a second. How much do you trust the political leaders of your nation? How much do you trust the opposing parties' leaders? Why? Is it because some politicians, many politicians, make a whole load of ambiguous statements and promises that they later don't go on to deliver upon, and, 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 and. So if you just think about trust in a political context, we understand that unless a person delivers upon what they claim to be all about, then the person does not qualify for our trust. However, over time, if a person does deliver what they claim to be all about and what they claim or promise to be prepared to deliver upon, then they earn our trust. But only once a person has showed us that there's more to their words than just noise. All right, come on, when we're evaluating people in life, we're not just listening to the words that people say. We're looking out for the substance behind people's words. Do people know what they're talking about? There's many teachers in the world today who have a lot of academic head knowledge rattling around in their heads, so they'll deliver a lot of really academic, informative presentations. But then you have some people who are perhaps less academically inclined, who have more experience, who then communicate and teach what they understand more from an experiential knowledge, right? So you can have academic head knowledge and you can have experiential knowledge, which is more like understanding, right? When we communicate, right, our head knowledge or our experiential understanding will flow out of us naturally, right? This is why sometimes if you take a training course and some people are just reading off a PowerPoint, academic knowledge. When a person isn't reading off a PowerPoint, kind of just going freestyle, which is kind of what I'm doing here, that can often be a reflection of experiential understanding when a person knows what they're talking about because they've had many, many years experience in doing so. So you might be asking the question right now, so kid, what experience have you got? Well, I'm not using this video to brag, I'm using this video to kind of more illustrate the point. I, I haven't always defined myself as a communicator, be it I've been communicating my entire life. My first, the first point, um, or the first time I started communicating professionally, 
I think I was around about 21 or 22 years old. Now my background was actually in the military. So I joined the military at 16 years old. And by the time um, I think I was 21, I'd been selected to join the British Army recruitment team. Someone had identified me as having a natural capacity to communicate and hold a crowd. I used to be a bit of a joker back in the army, back in my military days. Um, so I underwent two weeks of training in how to create PowerPoint slides. And um, then I underwent a little bit of training uh, delivering these PowerPoint slides to groups of perhaps five, 10, 15 people. Now this was the intention, right? This was the plan that as a member of this team, I would go and deliver presentations on all the opportunities within the British military as a potential career to school leavers or groups of unemployed people. So what would generally happen is I would go along and meet a headmaster or the faculty of a school and I would say, right, so this is what I want to teach, this is, what, this is the information I want to deliver. And the school would say, yes, we want this or, or no, we don't. So I'd gone to one, one college, I think it was in central London, um, and I'd been speaking to the headmaster um, who said, yes, this is fantastic. I've got a group of humanities students who I just think would be perfect for a presentation along this, along this lines. They don't understand that being a soldier isn't just necessarily running around with a gun, that being a soldier, you can become a, you can become a chef or you can become a mechanic or you can become a bricklayer or you can become an accountant in the military. There's so many career options. Um, so this was a real educational experience. But what I didn't realise was that this headmaster had actually bought more into me as a charismatic communicator. I didn't see myself as a charismatic communicator back then. I just saw myself as the joker. So a week or so later, as I uh, you know, um, went to this, to this college group, I was expecting to deliver my first ever live public talk to a group of 17 school leavers. What this headmaster had done was he had invited the entire learning environment. We're talking all students, all faculty. So when I walked into this main assembly hall, um, yeah, I just about laid a brick as around about 1,000 eager faces stood before me um, waiting for a phenomenal communication. And I had never communicated publicly before. Um, so I'll be honest with you, my first ever communication, um, I was a little bit nervous, just a little bit. I, uh, I can't remember how it went because I think I was just too busy focusing on my heart not popping out of my chest and my stomach not you know, being physically sick all over the place. And what I'm saying here is that, you know, communicating is kind of a skill that we develop over time. All right. It's through practice that we become competent and it's through our competency over time that we develop that enables us to be better understood by people. Um, that day, I can't remember what I said. I went off script. Um, I mumbled my words. I had a couple of Freudian slips. I said a few F words and things like that. I got some laughs. I got some questions and then ended up signing up. I think it was about 150 young people who were interested in getting more information. My predecessors said that when you deliver a, an event to a group that size, if you get 10 to 15, you're doing really, really well. And I'm not saying this to impress you, I'm saying this to impress upon you, the importance of not trying to communicate right, just communicating real. Alrighty, so define your communication goals. Um, the purpose of all communication must be to build relationships with people. If it's not, you will find yourself naturally disconnecting from people. So your main goal will either be to connect or disconnect or one off this list. Trust is developed over time. Once people are able to see that there's substance to our words and that we're willing to be authentic. Right, so the question is, when communicating, how authentic do you tend to commit to being? How much opportunity do you tend to give people to actually see who you are, thus grow to trust in you? Give that some thought and we'll build upon this idea in the next clip.